Hi, I'm Thomas Reinhardt, Mount Vernon's Director of Preservation. We're standing today in front of Washington's tomb. Uh, visitors to Mount Vernon are sometimes surprised to learn that Washington is buried here. Both the General and Mrs. Washington are in the sarcophaguses behind me. The, the new tomb, uh, by Mount Vernon standards, is a relatively newcomer on the scene. It's constructed 30 years after Washington dies in 1799. The terms of his will set up that a new tomb be constructed, but it takes his executors over 30 years to get the, the final form of the tomb laid out. The tomb is obviously one of the two most important sites of pilgrimage when visitors come to Mount Vernon. And as such, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association has always kept very good, taken very good care of the tomb. Um, but like any historic structure, you hear me say over and over again, these buildings are old and they need constant attention. In 2018, a situation with the tomb was brought to our attention when part of the ceiling plaster on the interior of the tomb began to delaminate, to become detached from the framing that holds it up. Investigation into that showed that it was time for us to actually deal with some moisture penetration issues that we found when we looked behind the plaster. The tomb receives annual assessments and it receives annual care. But about every 40 years um, in its history as a museum, as part of the Mount Vernon Museum, um, it has gotten an in-depth uh, uh, package of care. Sort of the same way that you brush your teeth every day, but yet every six months when you go to the dentist, they do a deep cleaning of your teeth. Every 40 years, the tomb gets a thorough assessment and a thorough caretaking. Uh, we are now on the, on the cusp of that 40-year uh, 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 caretaking. Um, we are seeing that water is beginning to infiltrate into the tomb through the roof. So we need to seal up the roof um, in work that uh, will be happening soon. We will need to replace the plaster on the interior of the vestibule, the plaster that covers and protects the sarcophaguses of the general and Mrs. Washington. We will also need to deal with drainage. Water that is shed from that roof has to be drained away from the building to keep it dry. And lastly, one of the biggest parts of the project that we will be undertaking in the near future will be the removal of a hard cement-based mortar in the brick enclosure that you see behind me. If we take a look over here, you can see above me, there looks like a little bit of white smudging uh, on the surface of the brick. That are, those, uh, that's caused by natural salts in the brick that get drawn out by water standing in the brick. And when that water starts to stand in the brick, when the mortar uh, it, that holds the brick wall together is too hard or is harder than the brick. When this building was originally built, a softer lime-based mortar was used to construct it. In the 1930s, during one of those in-depth repair campaigns, um, the only mortar available was a harder cement-based mortar. And now, almost 100 years on from that 1930s intervention, we're starting to see the, ex, the, the salt beginning to exfluoresce or um, uh, migrate to the surface of the brick. That causes the surface of the brick to begin to deteriorate. Another uh, byproduct of having these hard mortars in the wall for 100 years um, is that as the surface of the brick uh, freezes and thaws during the winter, you can see here, this is the smooth exterior surface of the brick and then it roughens up, little flakes of the surface begin to pop off as the water in the brick freezes, and that's called spalling. So we're starting to see the symptoms of a disease in the wall, and that disease is caused by the inclusion of that very hard mortar almost 100 years ago. So part of our project will be to remove that hard mortar and replace it with a soft line based mortar as it would have had when the tomb was completed in the 1830s. Moisture will penetrate a building in many different ways. Um, sometimes it rises up from the ground into brick walls, which is happening in the tomb. Um, and sometimes it penetrates through flaws in the roofing material, which also is happening in a very in small ways um, uh, in the new tomb as well. But once that moisture gets trapped, um, it begins to deteriorate the, the framing members and the pieces of wood known as lath that hold the interior plaster in place. And what we had was the, that the lath was beginning to turn spongy and that water content of the lath was causing the nails that hold the lath to the framing to rust. So we began to see that the plaster was flexing and starting to come down. So we removed 
some of it, uh, the, the existing plaster to protect the, the sarcophaguses of, of the general and Mrs. Washington. Our next step will be to remove all of the rest of the plaster so that we can assess the interior of the walls and make the repairs that we need. The reason we had to do that is the tomb is partly subterranean. It has earth piled up around it, so it does tend to be a damp building. Um, it's just there's no way to prevent that. But what we can do is try and keep that moisture out. And part of the ongoing maintenance of the building, since it has been owned by the Mount Vernon Lays Association, has been attempts to try and keep that moisture out. Today, we're actually suffering an increased level of dampness due to the success at keeping the moisture out. Um, because when they made a nice tight exterior, it actually ends up trapping some of the moisture in the building, and that's what's causing our that's what caused our plaster to fail a few years ago. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing is making sure that we have ventilation in the roof to allow that moist air to circulate out and to keep the, the roof and the ceiling of the tomb nice and dry. Uh, we will be removing all of this plaster, assessing the framing, and then putting more plaster back in place as part of our upcoming restoration. Um, while the tomb is, as I said, in good shape for its age, this periodic need for an in-depth repair and dose of tender loving care um, happens about every 40 years and we're at, the, we're at that point. So we need your help to be able to provide the care for Washington's tomb as it comes up to its bicentennial in, 20, in the 2030s, 2031. So it is really an important, we're at an important moment in the tomb's history and we need to get it in the best shape possible for that bicentennial and for future generations to be able to come here and pay their respects to General and Mrs. Washington.